uttermost surgeons. He's a Padma Shri. He has long list even today. And I must say that Dr. Shul sir and Dr. Mehta sir are both 80 plus and uh, fast surgeons. And uh, he's Dr. Lahane sir's guru and my grand guru. So let's hear from him. Sir will be talking on subluxated lenses. Uh, let's get them straight. A lot of points which he mentioned were really important. Uh, just to add on to what he said, I mean, I'd difficult to add on to what he said, but I'm going to add it on just so that it makes a little more clear as far as you are concerned. When you have a posterior polar cataract, and if you see, the edges of the opening are serrated, you know, like the bottle cap of the olden days when we used to open it, soda water bottle cap, you remember those caps, edges serrated, like a tart. You know that this lens is going to give way and rupture. This is what we call as grade 3 Daljeet classification. But that is an easy way to look. If it is not there, you can get away comfortably. The other easy way to remember is that you, when you do FACO, when you're doing a FACO, set it on to at the slowest level of FACO and remove the suction. Disconnect the suction in your FACO. So it is a passive ingress and a passive outgress that prevents you from catching the posterior capsule at any one time. So you can go right up to the periphery without any problems. With these two little hints as one would say, let me start off with my talk. I'm going to talk on things which are a little more, have a little more problems as one would say. Very often when an implanted eye wall moves out of position, it moves out for two main reasons. Either there's inadequate capsule support due to a tear, or there's inadequate zonular support. There's no other reason. Or if it's sutured, if you have sutured it, the sutures break. If the capsule is intact, but the shift has occurred due to inadequate zonular support, the best technique is to stabilize the eye wall bag. Let me show you this method. It's known as back to the wall method. It's a simple technique. It's easy to do. What do you need to do in this case is very simple. Now here you have a nice subluxated cataract. It's as subluxated as you would want it. You get up in the morning and see this cataract and your heart is happy that you have fun and games today. So you do your little rexus. You don't have to do a very big rexus because these cataracts are always very soft. Small little rexus is enough, but just make sure you do it. And then you use your hooks. Your cap there is an option of using regular hooks or using capsular hooks. I don't like using capsular hooks because I find they are far too long. I like using the regular hooks. So you thread it through and use your regular hook and suspend your lens up. Once your lens is suspended up, then we can breathe comfortably. Nothing much is going to happen. Then you do a little bit of a dissection, prolapse the lens out, and using, uh, as I said, a negative suction technique, just gradually remove the nucleus. Notice everything is moving very slowly, which is, that is what you wanted to do. Then finally, you remove your cortical pieces which are left over. Very important to remove them because otherwise you're going to be left in trouble. Then you put in a capsular tension ring. These are the times you really wanted. So you start a tension ring from the place where it is starting to prolapse, uh, just a little away, and then let your capsular ring push the prolapsed part of the out in. Next step, of course, is to suture the lens into place. It's not going to fit in that easily. So what we do is very simple. You take your lens and you suture the end to one end of the lens. Let the uh, take, your, take your little needle out and suture it to the end of the lens. Okay? Nothing much. You only put your lens in the holder folder you attach to one end and you let the needle come out. <coughs> Put your lens in, trailing end of the lens out, standard lens. Take your needle and pull it out a little. <coughs> Injecting while you're going so that you know it is there. Now see carefully because this is where the fun and games lies. You don't have to do much. It's a very simple technique and it works great. Take your needle below the capsular bag. 
let it come out on the sclera. And then inject your lens behind it. What are you doing? You have essentially sutured your thread onto the edge of your loop. You're pulling your loop out so that the lens is now going to go in. And the forward loop of the lens will now act as the device to hold your capsule in place. Once it comes out, now you have two options. Either you can suture it or you can pass it. Remember a fundamental principle that if you make three passes through the sclera, just three passes, it works as well as a suture. You don't have to suture it. You don't have to have an exposed needle lying outside. So you just pass your needle th through it two or three times. And now you release your hooks because now you want to center your bag. You got your suture lying in front. So now you can hold your suture and gradually as you go on pulling it, you will notice that the lens will center itself. Once you reach the point where you want it to go centered, that is the point where either you can place a single suture, which is more than enough, or just multiple passes of the needle through the sclera. If you put three passes, it usually it stays stable. But if you find this traction as we had in this particular case, it is wiser to put a single suture and then to bury the suture. So this is a very simple way in which you can handle most lenses which are partially subluxated, even badly Marfan cases as one would say. Now if the bag is inadequate or torn or the lens is hanging free, now what do you do? Best technique is at present day, you can suture the bag in, but remember that you have to have at least 50% of your zonules in a good condition. If they're not in a good condition, the bag is going to subluxate again and you're going to be back on your hands. So let me show you a, a new technique which we have evolved. It's the Yamane. Yamane is a modification of the Kanabara technique. Now here you notice a bag and the lens are both loose. When I move it, everything moves. When I move the bag, even the bag moves. So you know that trying any funny games with this, it means that the bag and the lens are just going to fall. It can, uh, can we shut the sound? What you need to do is very simple. You first cut the little conjunct driver. Follow these steps. This is a very simple method. It makes life easy. You can do it almost on any subluxated lens also. Apply a little cautery to cut down the bleeding. Okay? Take a marker, three millimeters or two and a half millimeter marker or three millimeter marker on both sides and mark it two points and one point forward because you're going to make a tunnel through the tunnel you're going to be passing the loops. The tunnel is going to be three millimeters long, that's why you mark it. Now you put in an AC maintainer. God's gift to the anterior chamber man. When you have a doubt, shove in a maintainer. But remember to keep the bottle as low as possible. Now you dissect out these what I call as Yamane tunnels, essentially utilizing a needle and just dissecting it forward. No, no brilliant surgery, no using scabs and you remove the nucleus and remove the lens first. Step one is the lens which you had, which you saw. Second step, you remove the capsular bag. Why don't you remove it together? Because it's much too fat. Here it reduces the amount. Once you've done this step, then you can cut down your flow. This is the bag which is lying outside. So you now insert an air bubble indicating that it's ample chamber depth. Do a little bit of, and put a single cross suture to close the wound and keep it in proper as far as possible, never keep a chamber open at any time. Always put a stitch and close it. Even if you're going to proceed as you are doing now, close it and chamber it. Now you take proline, 50 proline, freely available, it doesn't cost anything. Take your proline and thread it into a 27 gauge needle. No gymnastics, no rocket science. Just follow these steps. Now thread it through the tunnel you made, then bend the needle at 90 degrees and push it in. Hold your suture and pull it out. Same way on the other side, 
Bend your needle at 90 degrees and put it in. Hold your suture and take it out. Remove your needle. So you got proline, 50 proline on both sides. Cautery freely available, and you create a little knob. The knob is to hold it in place. So now your lens is held in place by two bits of gold. Gradually put your lens in, pulling the gold on both sides. Irrespective of what type of dislocated lens, this is the easiest way to do it. Anybody can do it. If I can do it, anybody can. Okay. Thank you, sir. Sir, you make it look very easy. And uh, I think, but that's the way. I remember Lahane sir used to always say that initially when people were teaching FACO, they used to say that it's very difficult, you can't do it. But you are one person who is telling everybody that it can be done. Not because if you can do it, you are, a, you are the best surgeon and the senior most surgeon and you are an inspiration uh, and a teacher to all of us. Nah, it's not like that, but just that this is a great simple method. And it's just a little bit of practice in the first one or two days. You may take a little more fumbling, but it involves no suturing. The lens sits in place. It just sits there. And the next day when you look at it, the eye looks almost totally normal. And you just think to yourself, why did I do this? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, 